welcome to the program today. I'm so happy you're here. What a treat we have in store for you today. But first, coffee. Get your coffee. It's really important. One day someone asked me, why coffee? And I said, well, because coffee is cheaper than therapy. <laughs> and it provides a lot of the same benefits. So grab something yummy to drink. Our guest today uh, is an amazing couple. My husband and I have had the privilege of knowing them for over 20 years. Uh, we have been able to minister with them, uh, watch their ministry, support their ministry. His book is something I give to lots of men on Father's Day. It, it's such a great uh, gift and he's done incredible things for the kingdom, for the Lord. So look, family is essential. Men are essential. Leadership is essential. Bonding and becoming that special unit is essential. So make sure that you gather some people around, text them, call them, and tell them to watch the program today and enjoy the ministry of Reverend R.V. and Francis Brown. But before we go into that segment, we have a yummy treat from the Homekeeper's Kitchen. Stephanie is cooking up a very healthy Italian meal, gnocchi. Let's go and see yum yum. It's so good to be in the Homekeeper's Kitchen with you today. I have my friend Jeanette Chabot here with me today. She's a coworker and a friend. Been here about five years. Yep works in the programming department, so I dragged her down here so I didn't have to do the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're making white bean and sun-dried tomato gnocchi. Gnocchi. <laughs> I wanted to make, she's Italian. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure I said it right. Okay, so I have oil from um, the sun-dried tomatoes. We took oil out of the jar yes. and that's in the pan. Now, I have cheated and I have done cauliflower gnocchi to cut carbs. It's okay. Jeanette's not very happy about it's okay. it. And I understand completely, but I have to <laughs> cut carbs where I can, right? Okay, so we have boiled that and now I'm going to put it in the frying pan. <clears throat> We're just going to brown it up a little bit. I wish it was real gnocchi, trust me. Ooh, that's nice and hot. You're done with this, right? Yes, and then we're going to put some um, white beans and some baby spinach <clears throat> in here also. I'm just going to let this brown for a second. I'll and, go ahead and chop the basil. And you're going to chop basil for the top. We have the sun-dried tomatoes. We have shallot, chicken broth, uh, heavy cream, and uh, lemon juice. And all of the uh, ingredients will come on, uh, come up at the end, and you'll there'll be a myriad ways of ways that you can get it. My blog, the fan page, the CTN online page. We're gonna make sure you can get it some way. So we're just browning this up a little bit, and I'm gonna put the beans and I'm gonna wilt the baby spinach down. And while I'm doing that. Jeanette and I have been sharing money-saving tips while I've had her on this week. Yes. Because we both have been very broke. Yes. And the way things are going right now with inflation and grocery prices and everything, we decided to just share tips with you because we've been there and we've done it. So our tip today, what's our tip today? A budget. Planning Create a budget. A budget. I've said this throughout my whole uh, money saving, sharing with you journey. You cannot know where you're going if you don't know where you are, right? right? So I, I sat down when we, when Dave and I first did this, I wrote, it doesn't have to be hard. Right. And a lot of people hear budget and they think, oh, I can't do anything because I have a budget. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sitting down, writing all your bills down, mm -hmm. going through your checking account, see where is your money going. Where every dollar is going. What are you debiting that is so easy to debit and you don't realize how much you're spending That's on. right. So you write down all your bills, then you write down when your paycheck comes, mm -hmm. and then you figure out when to pay each bill because nothing is a bigger waste of money than to pay a late fee. Right. It's not right. So create a budget. Just write it down. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be technical. You just need to know where you are. Just like a road map. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you are. I got jumpers here. So I'm just wilting this down. After this is wilted, I'm going to put a little bit more of that oil in. I'm going to put some sun-dried tomatoes. 
shallots. <clears throat> this is going to be delicious. And it's pretty healthy. I mean, it does look healthy. Yeah. You got the cauliflower, cauliflower. gnocchi. Yeah, and she wants to... <laughs> it's okay. The face. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. I can't help it. I have to cut carbs where it's I can. It's healthier. It I get is it. It's healthier. It's not true though, right? We'll, we'll do a true. soup one time for you with real. Okay, I need to hurry, so I'm going to just go ahead and move this over to a bowl. What do you need next? I'm going to put the oil in the pan. And I'm going to do some sun-dried tomatoes, the shallots. These are a powerful, packed, flavor-packed ingredient. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, and then shallot. We're just going to saute this up a little bit. I'll go ahead and do... Oh, that smells so good. Chicken broth. Heavy cream that I should have heated up, but I didn't. So let me crank this heat up. So good. And so easy. I mean, it's really super simple. If you do a meal plan and you do your grocery shopping by the meal plan and you have everything, you really can make it very easy at home to, to cook at home and not make it such a, a chore. Mm -hmm. And if you get your kids in there with you, even better. Okay, lemon. that was uh, lemon juice. I'm going to put this back in here. Listen, you need to let this cook a lot longer, but we're speed cooking because we have great guests to get to, right? Okay, let it cook a lot longer. Let the, let the spinach wilt, but we're going to taste it. We're going to tell you how yummy it is. I'm dying to try this uh, cauliflower. I know you are too, cauliflower gnocchi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let it cook a lot longer, okay? Okay. A little basil. A little basil. Because you make it Or pretty. a lot of basil. Yeah. Or a lot. Okay. Okay, let's try this. All right. That's okay. not bad for That's not bad. or gnocchi. That's good. I've never had gnocchi. So, well, I have. You said I have, but I don't remember it. So tell me. Is it good? It's good. It's Yeah. It's I didn't good. think it was going to be, but it's good. You're going to want this recipe, I promise. So the information will come up on the screen. We are always so happy to be here with you, and we'll catch you next time. Stephanie, food, glorious food. You know, I heard it said once by a rabbi that every book in the Bible somehow talks about food. And so it's important, right? Yeah. So listen, we, I'm so excited about today. We are here with a couple that I admire, respect, look up to, think the world of. They've been married for 45 years and they are soul winners and they are disciplers, not only fishers of men, but disciplers of men. Many times I've seen you guys in first watch doing <laughs> Bible studies and ministering. And Francis, you and I have seen each other in the gym sometimes. You know, neither one of us loved being there, but we did it. <laughs> we did it because we were disciplined or probably because our husbands were telling us we needed to go to the go, gym, go, go, right? Go, go. But uh, this yeah. is a, a precious couple. You know, years ago when I first met, you RV. Um, this is when this book first came out. And this is probably what, 20 years now? Yeah. And I bought um, a case of these and just have given them to men for Father's Day. And so go on Amazon. It's a great book. Also, your new book, which I want to read, uh, Commission to Pray for a Nation. Boy, isn't this timely more yep. than ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love what we're going to talk on today because it, it, it deals with, you know, spiritual warfare in the home and men stepping up mm -hmm. to the plate. And mm -hmm. then it also deals with prayer. Right. And, you know, the first institution that God blessed and created was family. family. Mm -hmm. And you um, have such a passion, both of you, to build strong foundations mm -hmm. in the family unit. And so let's talk about that today. How did this birth in you? And you came from a huge family. How I'm many one, brothers and I'm sisters? I'm one of 17 children. 
Ten, Who can say that? Number 16. Ten boys and seven girls. I'm the 16th of 17. But I tell you what, the most important thing in my family was prayer. Wow. My mom and dad prayed every night. Every night I can remember. And she'd always pray, Lord, you chastise RV. Have I do what you want to do? And I didn't understand the word chastise until I got older. That means God going to spank you. Now, if my mom and God spank I'm going to be a good kid. You, you. And the day I received Jesus Christ, I called my mom 42 miles away. She said, tell me what God has done in your life. And look at me now, 45 Woo. years later. Woo! Still loving yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank, <laughs> listen, thank God for praying moms mm -hmm. and praying dads. Yes. And we can't stress that enough. Never give up on praying for your children and your grandchildren, mm -hmm. your spiritual children, mm -hmm. your nieces, your nephews, because that effectual, fervent prayer it, avails much. Yes. Amen. And, and the key to, to a strong family is the relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and prayer. See, the, the relationship that a mom and dad has with prayer, that filters down to the children. Now, my father could not read and write, but he knew how to pray, and he knew how to talk about it. And I realized God gave that old man so much wisdom, and my mama taught us how to read and how to pray. So they were a team, and I think that's what we got to get back to in America, is we got to get the family to become a team. team. Mom and dad working together, not working apart, mm -hmm. but working together to bring unity in the home. It says in Psalm 133, it says, how good it is for brethren to dwell in unity. And unity come with mom and dad in love with Jesus Christ, that's gonna flow to the children. And that's what this is about today, is a strong family coming home, mm -hmm. bring it home, Dad. Yeah. Bring the Holy Spirit with you. When you walk through that door, you just walk into your palace. You be the king. You set the example. You set the atmosphere. When we can get men to have a relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and set the atmosphere in the home, the home will be okay. That's right. <laughs> okay, so what are some practical tips? Because I think anyone listening says, okay, I agree, but I, I didn't have a daddy. I wasn't taught. Uh, I want to be a man of God, I want to have a strong family, but how? How, how do you guys uh, counsel people and help people on those practical tips? Well, I, I tell you, seek and you get, find a church where there's small groups. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. and find, find a church where, they, where they're geared to having men do the right thing. See, when I went to my church, the first thing I saw, and I begged the pastor, let me have the men. Let me take them on a men's retreat. Let me plow into the men. See, if the, if the men, if the men will step up and get strong, the home going to be strong. So I challenge men, you get in a group, a small group. What most men do, they isolate themselves. Because, well, I didn't have a father. Well, let God be your father. You he says in Romans mm -hmm. 8, you can call me daddy. You can call me Abba. Amen. See, so find Jesus Christ. And when you mm -hmm. get Christ, now you seek out a church that's leading men to take the leadership role to be the men that God called them. The essentials of a family is a relationship with Jesus, prayer, and then what? Prayer, and then go to church, and then tell the children why you're going to church. Don't just take them to church. <laughs> tell a man why he's serving God, because Christ died for you, man, and you need to get on your knees and pray. The key to the family is prayer. Yeah, if we can yeah. get the family, the mama and the daddy to start praying with the kids when they're young, they'll yes. learn how to pray. I love to pray because I heard my mom and dad express it all the time. And the key is, the very key, prayer opens God's heart. I want, I don't want to get to get to heaven to get my blessings. I want to be blessed down here. I want another man to be able to look at me and see the light of Jesus Christ. Yes. Look at how I love my wife and watch how you need to love your wife. I'm going to set the example. Like I told my son, you just do everything you see me do. So that made me walk right. See? Yeah. And the three things that I get back to you, Jennifer, faithfulness, <laughs> yeah. consistency, and prayer. I love now watch that. this. If I'm praying and I'm consistent, God is always faithful. Yes. And if I'm faithful and I'm consistent, he answers all my prayer. That's the key to getting things with God. Be consistent. We, we go to church for a while, read the Bible for a while, then we stop reading it. If you get consistent with God, the blessing is going to flow. Yeah. The blessing is mm -hmm. going to flow. When I met her, I told, I, I told my friend, I'm going to marry that girl right there. <laughs> 45 years later, look at me now. <laughs> Don't she look good after 45 she years of marriage? She does. That's what, if, the, <laughs> if the men would just get excited, about being a man of God and being the head of the house. So leading them and do what God wants them to do. The home is going to be better. See, you never buy a home. You buy a what, Jennifer? House. You buy a house. And by you living it, you make it a home. See, when you live in that home, you have to set things in the home right. That H in home stands for help. Jesus Christ will help you build it. That O stands for observe yourself and see if you really serve God in your home. That M, you must be born again. That E, evaluate yourself and see if you love God. 
the way you tell people. Amen. 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 I love that. Amen. And that's, you know, this show is called Come Home. Come and home. so mm -hmm. I might have to steal that little acrom yeah. acronym and Amen. use it sometimes. It's free. Yeah, thank you. I know nothing Amen. new under the sun, right? Amen. I love your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I love your joy. I love the way you love mm -hmm. your wife. Mm -hmm. Francis, how, like, tell tell us about 45 years, you know, how you have come alongside RV and, and helped set this beautiful mm -hmm. family foundation. Yeah, well, I know it, it definitely is the Lord that built the foundation. And when we got married, neither one of us was saved. And then, like he said, that same year we got married, set 1977, then he got saved first and God began to build that foundation. And then later on, he opened my eyes because, you know, in growing up, me and my brother walked up the hill to the little local church, but we just didn't know about salvation. So God opened my eyes. I got saved. And then that, you know, it's been a journey because, yeah. You see how you keep looking at me like, yeah. it's been a journey being with him. It's well, a journey. And being with me, yeah. you know, because like I said, he got saved first. So I know that was a journey. Mm -hmm. But God is good. And the key God is, is the key is relationship <laughs> with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, if, if, the, if the men would just line up with the word. Yeah. I love the last word in the Old Testament. They said, I'm going to turn the heart of the men yeah. back to the father. Mm -hmm. the, the heart of the children back to the father. The heart of the children yeah. back to the father. The heart of the children back to the father. And then I'm going to turn the heart yeah. of the fathers back to the children. That's it, what I was going to say, too. It tears me up yeah. to see how many kids are yeah. suffering because dad walked yeah. away yeah. or dad don't want to be a part of the family. And I'm yeah. telling you, dads, that listen at me today. You yeah. get on your knees and pray. Yes. You get back yes. with your family. Even though you may be separated from them, you steal your mm -hmm. children. That's still your family. And you look at the word family. That word family, the father acknowledges oh, the mother influence the life of the children. That is about you. You were creating God's image. And if you show the image of God, we're going to see some families in America turn back. That's why I have this shirt on. I want America to get strong again. I want the family to get strong again so we can serve God as one. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't make now, me preach. I was gonna, you I can was, preach. Don't make yeah, me preach. I was, I was just going to say, I grew up without my dad because yeah. the enemy attacked uh, my mom and dad's marriage. And so I remember the day he left, I was about five years old, going down the steps with my brother, and then mom comes to the door crying, and we look up and we go back up to see about mama, and then dad leaves. And it, boy, it was a rough journey after that. We were in Cleveland, Ohio, and then, uh, then mama, my grandma took care of us. Thank God for grandparents. Yes, thank God. They took care of us for a while, and then, um, we moved to South Carolina, and that's where, you know, we were growing up. She moved to South Carolina and then, so she could meet me. There you go. It, <laughs> it was a divine appointment, the way we met and everything. I finished Winthrop College and then had some experiences there. And then, then he said, then the next year I went back to see my roommate graduate, and that's when I met him. Yeah. <clears throat> and I still have the piece of paper she gave me her address yeah. on. Wow. 47 years later. Mm -hmm. And about... A month ago, we took I took her back to Winston yeah, College. Yeah, took me up there. And got to the place where we met and didn't realize, Jennifer, that where we were standing when she had me that piece of paper, it's a cross. The really? sidewalk makes a cross. It's on my face, but you can see it so makes a cross. And so I asked this girl who just graduated to take a picture. Mm -hmm. God allowed me to lead her to the Lord. Yeah, we did. go to the dorm where she was living, yeah. where she gave me a piece of paper, and there was a mom and son packing their clothes up. We asked them mm -hmm. to come help me take, take a picture of us. Then I led both of them to the Lord. See, if a man's heart is right, he's always seeking Divine a place to share Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every day when I get up at 4, 30, 5 in the morning, I'm seeking God. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get up and read all this word and don't share it to somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to get saved today. <laughs> And I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we can, what we're doing here today, that oh. some man is sitting here listening to us today know yes. I need to get back in tune with God. I need to get in tune with my wife and my children. See, that's the key. Satan has separated the family because men mm -hmm. don't want to do their part. Mm -hmm. Men don't want to read the Bible. Men don't want to pray. They go to church every Sunday. And like I told my friend Kevin that, you know, so many people sitting in church, 
Well, they just said they go to church because so rich ritual. I go to church to get something from the message. And, and, and if the preacher don't preach something from the message, I'm going to tell him about himself. <laughs> See, every man needs to be tapping into God's power. And when you tap into God's power, Satan can't defeat you too easy. He will try, but you know what? You can say, you know what? You can't get through this. That's I right. hide behind the wood. There you go. And if a man get in this book right here, Jennifer, <laughs> I'm going to show you something. Then I'm going to be quiet. No, I, yeah, want you to, yeah. I want you to get a close to pull this in. <laughs> I want you to get a close. This is what makes a man strong. That's knowing right. the word of God, reading the word of God, <laughs> and believing in the word. The essentials for a family is the word of God. That's right. Amen? That's right. Amen. Praise it's, God. Listen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but that word mm -hmm. going, it's not going anywhere. That's right. It is eternal. It is forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The mm -hmm. enemy has done quite a job in getting men out of position. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for you, and I thank God for your ministry, and I thank God mm -hmm. for men like you that are calling the clarion call and calling men back where they should be. It's time. Mm -hmm. It's Amen. time. Because Amen. we cannot let our families continue to be ravaged and broken and our nation, we can't give it away. Mm -hmm. This is our watch. And we're going to answer to God for it. Amen. I want to live so I can make Tampa a hard place to go to hell from. There you go. Mm. See, That's I want to live with mission. power and passion. I want men to see this big guy sitting there. It's okay to love Jesus Christ. It's okay to love your wife. It's okay to read your Bible. It's okay to go to church, not just go to church, but I'm going to worship God. I'm going to get something from God so I won't run out. See, most people go to church and they're Monday morning. What did the preacher preach about? They don't understand anything. So go to church with your ears in tune to God. Where Go to church with a heart with ears on to hear what God is saying to you so you can strengthen the family. And I'm not neglecting the women because you look in 2 Timothy 1 5, Paul said, Timothy, you got good faith. Yeah. It came from your grandmama, yeah. your mama, yeah. Lois and Eunice. Yeah. Now, when I researched that, Timothy did have a dad, but he wanted nothing to do with the church like most men. So Paul didn't even mention him. You see, so I'm telling you, men, you want to be mentioned in this book called the Word of God? Yeah. Start loving your wife. Start loving Jesus Christ. Put Jesus number one, wife and family. See, the key is if we just get the men, the essential for a family is for the man to be strong. And if you're there by yourself, mama, you get on your knees. Don't go looking on some dating site. Don't go look for that. You say, I'm married to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And anything I need after that, God will bring it to me. Yeah. This is the answer, Jennifer. Yeah. This it's the answer. It is. If I could get men to take this book and say from Genesis to Revelation, I, mean, I got one problem, mm. Jennifer, with the word. I believe it all. I just mm. believe it. I just believe it. If a man just open this book and say, God, I, I'm ignorant to your word, <laughs> help me. As Peter said, I'm just an ignorant man. And God gave him the keys. Mm. Daddy, you got the keys, but you got to open the door. Open the door. What kind of door? Open the book called the Bible. It's, this is the door to God's heart. Read it. Mm. And think about this, church. Mo nobody in the Bible had a Bible. Yeah. We got the Holy Ghost, the Bible, TV, radio. We got everything. Why are we so weak, man? Because we're not praying and we're not taking God in his mm. word. He says in Psalm 84 11, he said, I'm a son and a shield, and I would not hold nothing from you if you walk upright. Right. Do you hear me, Daddy? Walk Love upright. Do you hear me, family? Walk upright. Preacher, preach truth. Don't get up there talking about what this person says, that person, what does the Bible Amen. say? So when people leave the church, they say, you know, that pastor used this scripture. Let me see what that scripture said. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, if you make this a, mm -hmm. a diet part of your diet, mm -hmm. you grow up be big like this. <laughs> Amen. Uh -oh. But I don't want you big sideways. I want you big spiritual. Yeah. spiritual. Loving your wife, loving your children, and setting an example in your home. Our young people are looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. Set the example, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. They are. Mm -hmm. They are waiting. And when, mm -hmm. uh, when the family unit, daddy, mommy, are not in position, then they're going to go and look for another example. Amen. Amen. I love how you keep talking mm -hmm. about the example. I know a lot of men feel intimidated. They feel mm -hmm. threatened. They feel like they're not enough. They feel inadequate. That's a huge responsibility that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And some just quit before they even get started, RV, mm -hmm. to speak to them. How, how do they overcome that lie or that belief that they don't have what it takes, that they think, well, you know, my wife is more spiritual or, you know, my grandmother's more spiritual, not me. I'm going to let them kind of take the lead there. <laughs> how, how do you position them? Well, the first thing I ask a man is that, 
He need to have a relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and know who Christ is and then ask God for wisdom. He says in Philippians, Proverbs 4, 7, he said, wisdom is the principal thing. Learn that wisdom, get wisdom, get understanding. See, ask God. You say, well, I was raised by my mom and my grandma, but I tell you what, you're a man now. Act like a man. Seek a man out. Say, I need a leadership. I need leadership from a man. I need leadership from my pastor. And I want the church to realize it's your responsibility to disciple me, not just get them saved, but disciple. Mm -hmm. Most men are weak because they, 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 what? nobody's taking the time to uh, disciple them. Proverbs 18, one said, when a man isolate himself, he seek his own mm -hmm. demise. Don't isolate yourself. Don't get on the island by yourself. Go and say, look, man, I need some help. And don't mm -hmm. be afraid to say, I need help. It says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God is not giving you a spirit, spirit of fear. fear. Yeah. Let me tell you something, men. Philippians 1, 6 said, be in confidence of this very thing. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it yes, until the will. day of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, men. Get on your knees and pray. Trust God. Honor God. And I promise you, God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the strength. God will give you the insight. But you got to get focused. And you got to become mm -hmm. an obedient man to the word. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 22, obedience is better than sacrifice. So, men, let me tell you, sacrifice. Get on your knees. Mm -hmm. Talk to God. Mm -hmm. And then I want to do something with you right now. I want to pray with you right amen. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's pray, men. Mm -hmm. Father God, I ask right now, Lord, that you take this old clay voice of mine, Father, and speak truth to some man that's listening to me right now, Father. He needs to cry out to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And if he cry out to you, you will hear his prayers, Lord. Let him acknowledge you as their Lord and say, let him believe mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ mm -hmm. came. He died on the cross. He rose on the third day according mm -hmm. to the scriptures, Lord. Amen. And if he will just say, God, I need help. Psalm 34, mm -hmm. 6, David said, this poor man cried. Right. And the Lord heard him and delivered him. Cry out right now, men. Cry out, young men. So I need some help, God. And yes. if you accept Christ today as your Lord and Savior, I promise you, Things not going to be a bed of roses, but I promise you, God won't let yeah. it all be thorns. Amen. He will ease the pain because you've got somebody yes. that loves you that said he would never leave you, not forsake. But I ask you right now, man, let this be the day that you accept Jesus Christ Amen. as your Lord. Say, say this in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord. will you forgive me of my sins? I believe you are the son of mm. God. I believe you died on the, died on the cross and you rose. On the third day, according to the scriptures, yes. Father. And okay. Father, I want to make you the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul today, Jesus. Come into my heart. If you would do that, man, mm -hmm. now you got the inside help. Now seek some outside help from men mm -hmm. with wisdom and can counsel you and lead you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we love you. In your Son's name we pray. Amen, Jennifer. Amen. 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 That was powerful. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. Amen. Thank you Thank for your you for ministry and your legacy and your legend and your love. Praise Thank God. you for being with us today. Hallelujah. Come home. Come back to the Father. Come back Amen. to Jesus. Come, Come home. back to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.